Hello! My name is Tim Jacklin and I teach mathematics at Spring Valley High School. You're watching this video because you were enrolled in my class or you fell down a really deep nerdy rabbit hole of YouTube math obsession. In any case, welcome. You're starting a series of lectures in which I'm going to yell loudly and excitedly about statistics so that you will develop a conceptual understanding of the AP Stats curriculum. It will be amazing. Now, I would not be doing my job if I did not make this abundantly clear from the onset. You're not going to perform well in this class by simply watching these videos. The lectures are meant to serve as your preparation for the real practice of statistics. You're going to learn by doing, by working through examples on your own, struggling and problem solving. So what do you need to do? You are expected to watch and take notes the day before entering class. Did you notice that? The pulse in the bottom left corner of the screen indicates something important is happening. These pulses will tell you when I am about to answer one of the questions from your provided notes. You should have your pencil and notes handy and be ready to hit the pause and rewind buttons if need be. So let's try that again. You are expected to watch and take notes the day before entering class. In doing so, you will have a basic understanding of the what we are doing. You'll develop the how and why in class, but by doing this pre-work before, you free up valuable time for practice, feedback, and skill mastery. Now let us begin together by simply answering the question, what is statistics? Answering this seemingly grammatically incorrect question will serve as the general framework of this course. Put simply, by the authors of our textbook, The Practice of Statistics, 5th edition, by Starnes, Tabor, Yates, and more, statistics is the science of learning from data. Well, that's just wonderfully vague. So let us get more specific with this definition. By practicing statistics, you will collect, organize, and analyze data from a small representative subgroup of a population such that it becomes useful information. Now from there, you may be able to calculate probabilities, make objective predictions, and evaluate claims made about the entire population. All right, well, that was really wordy and dense. So let's break this down into five simple steps to summarize the practice of statistics. They are ask a question, collect data, organize it, analyze it, and make an inference to answer the question. Let's discuss each of these steps in detail. Step one, ask a question. In order to do statistics, you need to have a question. These questions can be wide ranging in scope and scale. For example, I might want to know if a new medication is more effective than an old one. Maybe a general manager of a basketball team wants to know what is the better indicator of success for her team, good offense or good defense. You might want to know if there's an association between listening to music while performing a task and your ability to focus. Now, before you can do anything in statistics, you need context. And that comes from posing a question to answer. Step two, collect data. You may think you know the answer to these questions based on your own personal experiences. The problem is, how do you know your observations are consistent for any similar situation? Moreover, how do you know your personal biases are not swaying your judgment? Thoughtfully collected data provides you with an objective set of observations by which you can make reasonable and unbiased conclusions. Step three, organize your data. Organizing the set into a table or graph is a necessity. Not only is organized data easier to work with, a graph shows you a picture of how individuals in a sample tend to behave. This graph gives you an immediate clue as to how to answer that question. Step four, analyze your data. In this phase of the practice of statistics, your data becomes information. Here you may perform calculations, interpret graphs, and find evidence that will help answer your question. And then finally we come to step five, making an inference. Now making an inference is just a fancy way of saying you are answering that question. Imagine you want to know what is the average weight of a specific species of ocean fish. In order to find the true answer to that question, you would need to catch and measure every single fish of that species. Not only does that sound like an exhausting job, but it is virtually impossible to do accurately. How do you know you caught every fish? How do you know you didn't catch the same fish twice? So what should you do? Well, it turns out that a small but representative group can speak for all of those fish in the entire ocean. You analyze a sample or that small group and you say something about all of the fish in the ocean. And that is what's called making an inference. You see, statisticians are lazy. 
but they are smart. And they found ways to make accurate and reliable predictions by doing just the minimal amount of work. So good for you. You chose a science that prides itself on doing as little as possible. And there you have it, the practice of statistics broken down into five simple steps. This gives you an idea of what it is we will do in this class. In short, you will ask a question, collect data, organize it, analyze it, and make an inference to answer your question. By practicing these five steps, you will not only be a statistics wizard, you will also develop a system to solve just about any problem. Through this course, you're going to improve your critical reading skills, identify the right questions to ask, learn how to organize your thoughts, prepare those thoughts for work, and actually move toward a solution. So do not think of this course as just statistics, but think of it as a vehicle to develop problem-solving skills that you can use for the rest of your life. So there, don't say I didn't teach you anything useful. All right, everyone, that's it for today's lecture. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.